We're with Wilson County News, and we are here to kind of equalize the story about the coach that uh, that turned around and hit, uh, butted one of the students' heads, high school coach, and uh, and then also had said to the boy that he was going to cut his throat and kill him and all that stuff. And his mother really kind of you know took that further, as usual, and and probably because of non understanding of what really goes on. Right. Um, and uh, they were interviewed by a large TV station, okay? And they only interviewed the one party and they never got the other side. So what we're doing here today is we are really uh, going to bring the other side of the story. And okay. so we can, you know, bring this out. So, right. Because nobody else is. Okay. So I have with me Reggie Peoples, uh, an ex-boxer and an ex-football player, to kind of explain exactly what goes on on those teams and why they do do this these things to their students because they do right right so yes, I mean, they definitely do explain to me exactly why the coaches do what they do why do they butt heads why do the classmates get all worked up and they run against some butt chests and <laughs> and, and act like that well i mean it, it it's not just on, on, on the high school level. If you watch some of the collegiate games, if you watch some of the professional games, it, it, it's a hype, you know. What they want to do is they, they want to hype their players up and get them ready to, to perform in the event that they're getting ready to participate in. Uh, football is very physical, okay. You can't go out there and play football lackadaisical and expect to come out victorious. You can't do it. Once you hit that field, you have to have that adrenaline pumping. All right? And that's what coaches do. You have some coaches, you know, that are laid back. You know, it's more of a chess game to them. All right? And then you have some coaches that are just, you know, out of the spectrum. You well, know? What coaches do actually get the better turnout? Well, you have a combination of both. That's why you have a team of coaches. Okay, that's why there's a team. Just like there's a, a team of players, there's also a team of coaches. You have coaches that, you know, they all specialize in something different. You know, I know in my experience in coaching, you know, Little League football, I was a hype guy. Okay, and it was my job and it was my duty to get the team hyped up. I don't care how small or how minute the, the task that they did on the field, I made it larger than life, you know. A guy that, you know, okay, he didn't make the tackle. Okay, but he got in the way and he tripped the guy up so the next guy could make a tackle. I'd run out there and I'd pick that kid up and I would shake him and I would tell him good job. You know, I'd slap him on the helmet. I'd slap him on the butt. But I would let him know what he did was phenomenal. You know, and and that's what any good coach will do. You know, they will, you know, they will praise their players, okay? Now, you get caught up in the moment. And I'm not going to say you don't because I have, you know, and you, you, you speak out of aggression, okay? And, and, you, and you may talk out of text, but, you know, that's a coach. You know, if you've ever been passionate about anything, you know, you know emotions is going to take over. Right, and that's, and that's another problem is, is that um, how does that child or how does that person toughen up? Is that what the coach's job is yeah, to do that? that to that's the coach's job, yes. To stand against the other ones picking on him. Yes. And, well, and, see, and in life, right? Yes. I mean, that's what a coach is. A coach is a mentor, all right? And the coach is going to teach you three things on the field. They're going to teach you the physical aspect of the game. They're going to teach you the mental aspect of the game. And they're going to mentor you through all of it, okay? Because what coaches do on the field and what you learn in practice is not half of the things that you're going to hear and you're going to see when you're out there on the field with your peers. Yeah, they're crosstown rivals, but I'm going to tell you something. They're out there to do everything they can to win that game. I'm, they're talking about your mom. They're talking about your dad. You know, they're talking about your sisters. They're talking about your family. I mean, when I played ball, I mean, we got threats all the time. Talking about if you score, you better not go home because your mama ain't going to be there. I mean, granted, I wasn't worried about that, you know, because I loved the game. I had passion for the game. 
Uh, now, I did dirt myself. I mean, but that's just, you know, what we prepared for, you know, in practice. That's what our coach prepared us for. So what does a coach do when uh, to keep a teammate from losing that control in a fight and start wanting to fight instead of play? Uh, right. And break his con uh, his concentration on the game. So how does a coach get around that and, and, and mold that person not to let that stuff bother them? Because sometimes I can drive down the road and somebody will say something or blow a horn and man, I'm ready to go. You yeah. Know? Well, it's just it's it's all in the coach. You know, coach each coach has a different way of, of training and teaching discipline. Uh, you know, I had a, a boxing coach. You know, because I boxed also that. You know, he would let me fight out of anger, all right? But he was teaching me that you can't fight out of anger because every time you fight out of anger, for one, you're fighting with emotions. Two, you're out there swinging for the moon and you're dictating it, the punch that you're throwing because you're trying to throw it so hard. Is that That's, the same thing that happens out on the field, even yes, in a football game? Yes, the same thing that happens in a football game, all right? And what they do is they try to get next to you they try to get under you under your skin to take you out of your game you know and they will do and say anything I mean I've done it myself you know uh, I've had my ankle broke playing football by somebody twisting at the bottom of the pile after I was tackled you know, I've even bitten somebody at the bottom of the pile while I've tackled somebody but that's just all part of it and your coach prepares you for that in practice. Your coach, he's going to hoot, he's going to holler, he's, he's going to shake you, he's going to rattle you. He's going to do everything he can to get you to understand that what I'm doing right here is not half as bad as what's going to happen to you out there on the field. And if they lose control of themselves on the field, then the plays are done. Oh, yeah. Well, that a good coach, if, if he knows that you're, you're losing contact for, with the game, then the best thing for him to do is to pull you out of the game, sit you on the bench, talk to you, and get you to understand that it's a game. But what, what about uh, when you're in the <laughs> practice field? What are they doing there? I mean, is here's my point. A field's a field. When the, when the coach hit butt the boy's head, Okay, even though the boy had a helmet on, and right? The coach did. Okay. Right. When he butted his head, what was he really doing by the threats and butting his head and and, and because he was, you know, he wanted, you know, he broke up that fight. Right. Right. Well, he was letting the kid know that hey, you don't fight your teammate. Okay. If you have anger and you have aggression, you take it out on me. Okay. You take it out on me because you're not gonna hurt me. Okay. I'm an adult. I can take whatever you bring to me. I've been there. I've gone through it, you know. But in the same time, he was trying to teach the kid, this is your teammate. You don't fight each other. You save that fight for Friday night on the field when you're playing against your opponent. That's when you fight. You don't fight here in practice. You fight game time, all right? Because I'm going to tell you, nine out of ten times, somebody that is going to fight their own teammate, they're going to get pushed around out there on game night. Yeah, because they're so comfortable with this teammate and they know that they can bully and push them around. But when they get in front of somebody that they don't know, it's a whole different story. So is it? Is it? are they actually being taught to just to plain to control themselves? Yes. Through aggression? Yes. Yes. I mean, you, you do not play or you do not participate in any sport in anger. You just don't do it. Uh, it's not something that you want to teach a kid because you have so many kids nowadays that already, you know, react out of anger. And that's why you have kids out on the streets doing some of the things that they're doing now. Uh, I know growing up, you could get in a fist fight and you could be best friends tomorrow. Right. Nowadays, you get in a fist fight, you better not go to the store because they may be down there waiting to shoot you. That's right. That's right. Okay? Because they let it escalate. And that all comes from, you know, upbringing at home. So the coach, he turns around and controls that. Mm-hmm. 
Now, this coach uh, that we are talking about, he had turned around and threatened the boy that he was going to cut, cut his throat and come on, I'm going to beat you and all this stuff. This is after, right after right. in the fight. Right. Is that kind of a normal procedure, actually, or not? I mean, well, it can. Uh, and to be honest with you, John, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. The coach is caught up in the moment. All right. I mean, because I can tell you some things that my coaches have said to me that if what he said to that kid is, is, is creating this much of a stink, then they would have just gotten rid of the sport altogether growing up when I played ball. <laughs> All right. Uh, just to, uh, to tell you a little story, I, I played ball in Smyrna uh, for back in the 70s when uh, youth football first came about in Rutherford County. I had a play designed to run the ball. I ran the ball and I saw where I was supposed to go. All right. It was no hole there. So I thought to myself, hey, I'm going to bounce it outside because I was fast. I knew I could outrun everybody. So there I go. I take off down the sideline. I score. I'm jumping up. I'm excited. I'm happy. I get to the sideline and my coach grabs me under my shoulder pads and I'm 11 years old. And I'm six feet off the ground, and he's, yaking, he's shaking me and yelling at me, telling me that, you know, I need to follow instruction. I need to follow direction. That's not the way the play that was designed. I'm dumbfounded at this point. You know, I don't know what's going on. I'm dumbfounded, you know. Then he put me down, and he told me, good touchdown. Patted me on the button, told me, good touchdown. Good touchdown. And you don't want to talk about confusing? Yeah, I was real confused then. I got yelled at for scoring a touchdown. Then I got told congratulations for scoring a touchdown. But what the coach did, at the end of the game, he came and told me the reason that he wanted me to do what he want, what he had signed, the design to play to do. There was a minute left in the game, and he was trying to run timeout. Okay, and with me bouncing it outside scoring, I gave the other team an opportunity to come back and score. So he wanted me to run the play as designed. He didn't care whether I, I, I got yards or not. He wanted me to run the clock out. And of course, and of course you didn't follow that plan. Of course I didn't follow that plan. I was 11 years old. All so, I could think was touchdowns. So what did the aggressiveness of that coach do for you at, on that incident? I mean, you know. Well, it got my attention for one. Mm -hmm. All right. It made me listen. All right. And it made me understand that, hey, what this guy's telling me? I need to do what he says because he knows why he's doing that. I don't need to take it upon myself to to change the yeah to make it my own. Yeah. Lebanon has not had a winning game or you know season right. in eight years at all. Wow. So what would be the what what would be some of the causes of that actually that would cause that to happen? Because the new coach that they just got. He has had a bunch of wins under his belt, the head coach. Right, right. So what would cause that where they just weren't winning? Well, I mean, you got several aspects of that, okay? Uh, it could be a coaching and coaching staff, uh, which I don't seem that to be uh, in this case because uh, from my understanding, this coach has got several uh, national championship rings uh, from coaching. Uh, the biggest thing, though, in from coaching uh, football, coaching uh, boxing, and things like that. Parents' participation, you know, it, it's just that simple. You have to have, the, the team don't stop with just the ball player. It has to go into the family. And parents' participation is, is a big key to any organization's success. You know, I don't care what it is. Even when I played Bay Ruth baseball, you know, we, we had team moms. We had parents that would wash uh, the uniforms. We had parents that would be uh, boosters, you know, and be at every game. But in order to have a successful season, and in order for Lebanon to have a successful season, they're going to have to have more parent involvement. Uh, they're going to have to. They're going to have to support their coaches. All right? And... It's like a double-edged sword. You're going to have to be there, but not. Okay? Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is that you're going to have to be there to support your coach's decisions. You're going to have to be there to back your coaches, all right, and what they do and how they handle the players. 
but you're going to have to get out of the way too and let the coaches coach. You know, you can't come in and you can't, you know, bark every time, you know, they may yell at your child or every time they may, you know, say something not derogatory but not in a positive way to your kid because all they're trying to do is get them to use their mind, get them to think. You know, and, and that goes with teachers, period. You know, parents, you got to get on board. You got to. You got to be there, but you got to be invisible. You got to support your coaches. You got to support your teachers. You know, one of the biggest things I think, and I know this is probably going way off the spectrum here, but one of the things that I think that they they took out of school that they should have left in school, one is prayer, two is, is, is paddlings. You know, I got paddlings growing up in school. Too. Oh, man. <laughs> and let me tell you something. You yeah. know what? When a child at that age realizes that there's repercussions for their actions, all right, mm -hmm. when they went to this grounding stuff or punishment or stuff time like outs. that, time out, yeah. they don't care. They, wanna, they don't want to be bothered with you anyway. You're their parents. How many kids want to hang around with their parents when they're 13 and 14 years old? I didn't. So you ground me and put me in the room? Yay! I'm happy. <laughs> You know, you're gonna be there. I'm anyway. gonna be there anyway. That's I'm right, on the phone right. or doing whatever. But the way my parents brought me up is like, you're not grounded. You can still go to your friend's house. You can still have, you know, your toy. Or you can still have your bicycle. It's gonna be kind of tough to ride it because I'm gonna heat your rear end up before <laughs> you go out. You know, but that taught me a lot. That taught me discipline. Okay, because if I knew if I went out and I done something. All right. When I was growing up, if the neighbor that saw me do it didn't get on to me, by the time I got home, my parents already knew what I'd done, so I couldn't lie to them. I knew there was going to be repercussions for my actions. So that's why I think, you know, kids nowadays, they, they need to experience that. They need to experience that because they ridicule another kid, okay? Uh, creating peer pressure on a kid. That's why you have so many kids running around shooting their parents. So you got so many kids running around shooting up theaters because they can't handle the pressure because they never had that butt whoop when they were younger. All right? That butt whooping developed tough skin. So that's really what the coaches are yeah. really about. They're, yes. They're making it hard. They're thickening up the kid's skin so he can he will be more developed and prepared for life. They don't just teach you the game, they teach you life. All right? Yeah. Look at the generation we have when we grew up. All right? They're doing great. But look at how many young kids that have come after us have already perished and died, all because they didn't have the discipline or they didn't have the thick skin to be able to handle a tough situation. Right. And you have that on the field constantly. You got it on the field constantly. You got it on the field constantly. And I go back to the same thing, you know, parents, you know, be there but be invisible, you know. Support your coaches, support your teachers, you know, no matter what function they're in, football, basketball, dance, softball, it doesn't matter. Support the coach's decision. They're there for a reason. They are. Reggie. I want to thank you for this interview. Okay. Uh, this is John Townley with Wilson County News.